uh, I think we have to go back and ask um, the question, what is our purpose? Uh, I think we get caught up a lot of times in micromanaging when we are when we're trying to accomplish something that we want to accomplish, as opposed to our underlying purpose. As the vital ministry, our underlying purpose is to equip people for their work of ministry. Our, our wow. job is not to get people to go do our work or what we want to do. And I know there are things that we do want to do, and we have to be very careful with that because it becomes predominant upon the vision or the things that we want to accomplish, as opposed to equipping people. Uh, we can be very tempted to mark and manage because we see how things be done. Um, we have a vision for it, um, as opposed to saying, I want to equip you for your work of the ministry. And if I can equip someone for the work of ministry, I don't know exactly what all the details are of that ministry they know. Um, my job becomes one of a trainer and a developer, uh, not one of a micromanager. It's a whole lot easier to do that than it is to try to run everything in the church. And I think it comes back a lot of times between trying to grow people as opposed to trying to uh, grow a church. And uh, I think the micromanager probably becomes, um, is probably more in the area of trying to grow a church numerically, I'm talking about. Uh, you know, church numerically, I think we'll probably get caught up in micromanaging more than we do in trying to quit people. Having said that, I would add one thing to that. Um, when I was writing Realign, I interviewed um, Brother um, Woodward, and uh, he made a statement to me that he was praying one day, and his prayer was, um, you know, God helped me to help Jack Lehman, which was the assistant pastor at the time, now I was the pastor. Um, he said, help me, help me grow. And the Lord said, what, what are you trying to do? He said, I'm trying to help him grow. And he said, the Lord spoke to him. He says, no, you're not doing that. And he said, well, what am I trying to do? He said, well, you're trying to make him become another Raymond Woodward. And he said, we don't need uh, another junior Raymond Woodward. Uh, I need a Jack Lehman. And um, he said, really dumb on him that what he had done was that he had hired Jack Lehman, who had much of the skill set, like his wife, uh, in other words, she complimented Raymond Woodward, Jack Lehman complimented Raymond Woodward. But just as he came when he first got married, trying to change his wife to be like him, he was trying to do the same thing with Jack Lehman, make Jack Lehman like him. So he was called up and tried to micromanage him so that he would be like Raymond Woodward. So I think um, one of the biggest things we can do is celebrate our differences. Hello. My name is Hugh Plankford, and welcome to Finish Line Planning, where we help pastors who are undertaking church growth alone. It is my goal to assist pastors and lay leaders like you to optimize your growth potential in an environment of minimal time and staff. 60% of churches in North America operate with less than 100 members. Most of them require a bivocational pastor. Undertaking church growth alone can be challenging, and we're here to help. To maximize our resources and videos, we partner with church growth leaders like Carlton Kuhn, Tim Massengill, Dr. Eugene Wilson, Gary Elias, Dan Kyle, Calvin Jean, and others. To make the most of this opportunity, for your ministry, church, and community, click the subscribe button here.